Okay guys, so I've got the wheel cleaned up and ready to get the tire mounted on it and put it on the bike. One of the things that's important to do next is to figure out the rotation. So we've got the cush drive that goes to the chain side and the rotor that goes to the caliper side. So this wheel is gonna roll this direction when it's on the bike. So the tire is rotation specific. So we gotta check the arrow on the tire. Let me show you that in just a second. But before I do that, let me show you my homemade tire maker. So what I've got is a little ceramic heater that I put inside the tire and then I constantly just keep rotating it. You have to be very careful though. This works a little too good. It'll make your tire get so hot you just about can't touch it. So if you're gonna do this, be super careful. In the summertime, you can just set the tire out in the sun and get plenty of heat. In the wintertime, I've found that this helps a lot when things get a little warmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut my heater off, take my tire. What you can see, if I turn down here, you can see this arrow on the tire that shows tire direction. So I'm gonna think about if this tire goes on, I believe it's this direction. So zoom into my arrow for me. Here's my arrow here. Here's my arrow. If this goes on the bike, when this is up, that's gonna be rolling the right direction. So the tire has a yellow dot on one side. There's no yellow dot on this side, but there's a yellow dot on this side. In my case, the yellow dot goes to the cush side. The yellow dot is indicative of the lightest part of the tire. You wanna locate that with the valve stem. And then when you mount it and go to balance it, it can be fairly close. You're still gonna to have to add some weight and if you don't get the yellow dot in the right spot, or if you get it off a little bit, it's still gonna work. But if you get that yellow dot as close to the valve as soon as you can, you're gonna make things easy. So now here's my next trick. I like to take five to six of these big nylon wire ties. You get these at Harbor Freight. They cost about a dollar for a pack. I'm gonna wrap them around the tire, zip them down, make sure that you get the buckle outside of the tire, not inside of the tire. Push the bead together as close as you can get it. Sipping that on, put another one on here, which reminds me I forgot one tool, which is a tool that I use to either take these back off or cut them off. Um, you can just unratchet them and pull them off. That's what I'm gonna try to do today is just unratchet them. So right now while this tire's warm, I'm gonna try to get these on as best I can and then I'll get my little screwdriver that I use to unratchet them. Again, super important to keep the little ratchet tool outside of the tire. I think five is normally enough. I'm gonna go ahead, since I've got six here, I'm gonna put six on. And I'm pulling this down, as you can see, I'm actually getting the beads to touch, which makes it that much easier to get the tire mounted. So as I've got some of these that didn't get all the way as tight, I can come back. And I spread those two right there out a little too far, but I think we'll be okay. Keep, keep tightening them down here as I go. All right, so all this looks pretty good. I've got it about as tight as I want to get it because it's about as tight as it's going to go. Now, the next thing i got to remember, i got a pretty big gap right here. I'm just going to go ahead and throw another wire tie on. Again, I'm going to pull these off and reuse them so it's really no big deal. But at a dollar a pack, it's almost not worth fighting to take them off. Okay, here we go. We're looking pretty good now. Now, again, tire lubricant is your friend, but a little trickier when you're mounting the tire. You don't want to get a bunch of lubricant inside of the tire. It's okay to get it on the bead, but if I get it inside of the tire, I want to try to clean that off. But usually, until we get it set on here, I'm not going to worry about that until I go to mount the second bead. So we're going to go ahead and get plenty of tire lubricant. Now, again, I wanna make sure that I put it on the wheel proper for the proper rotation. I know my yellow dot's going up and I'm lining my yellow dot up with my valve stem. Now, I'm just gonna push the tire on as best I can. Once I've done that, what I wanna do is where I've got these beads touching, I wanna pull them as close into the drop center as I can so it will allow me to get more of the tire on. So I've seen some guys put this on without using any spoons. There you go, first time for everything. So the tire just went on with no spoons. Now I just gotta get my straps off and the tire will pop back out.
I like to get these off of here pretty quickly because the longer they stay on, the more likely the tire is to take a set. So I'm just getting in the zip tie and lifting the little ratchet clip back away with a little fine flat blade screwdriver. And I should be able to just back this out. Now, if I end up having to fight it, then I just cut it. So I believe I'd be cutting them anyway for a dollar. There we go, right there. We're open. <coughs> Zip tie out. You gotta be careful, that will rub the paint off your tire. The other thing you gotta be careful is the tire is so loose in here and flops around so much. You could actually have the, the yellow dot lined up and move it out of the way by accident, which is really rare, because usually once the tire is on, you're not moving it. Now this one, I'm having a little bit of a harder time. This is Blue Ridge Rider just said, wasn't worth her time to take these off, but. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> well, one thing about it is you do have to fight them to get them off with the pliers. And on top of that, we've got them and we might need them <laughs> next time. So there's two of them off. Now what you notice, and I've kind of learned this trick, is I'm moving around a little bit as I do it. This helps me make sure that the tire stays in place better. I don't have to do that, but it tends to work pretty good. All right, so I'm checking my yellow dot, and you can see right there, so I can still move the tire on the wheel. So I'm gonna line it up as best I can. Now, one of the problems, like I was saying about this, if that tire takes a set, which it can do, um, you'll have a much harder time setting the bead. So you don't want to leave these wire ties on here long. Put the wire ties on, get them off. Because they're going to, if, if you have a hard time getting that bead to seat, this whole process uh, can feel like a waste. Because that's probably the second hardest piece of this, very frankly, is setting the bead. Seating the bead, I guess, is the correct terminology. Now, some guys out there use tire beads to balance their tires instead of weights. I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> Why? My number one reason I don't like that is there's not a tire manufacturer out there I'm aware of that approves the use of tire, be of, of tire beads, primarily because they cause some wear inside of the tire that I think manufacturers aren't completely familiar with. Now, do I think at some point in time they will allow tire beads. I think that's probably coming because they, they are effective in balancing the tire. The problem is the wear that they cause to the tire. All right, so there we go. <laughs> to the inside of the tire? Last strap off. Wear to the inside of the tire, yeah. So here you can see my yellow dots is pretty well lined up. Got a place or two here where the wire strap's still kind of Taking a seat to the tire. I'm bumping that a little bit. Now, this right here looks like it's moved up on the bead pretty good. This is not on the bead very good. I'm gonna take and sort of bounce the tire a little bit, not too hard, and try to get that to come on up. Now, what you can see, this is seating pretty good. This is not seating very good at all. This side of the tire, same thing. This is not seating very good. Now it's against the wheel, but the bead is not seated. So we've got to get that bead now to pop up on that tire. So this is where I take my little tool I showed you earlier. My clamp on inflator right here. We're gonna go ahead and put that on there. I'll have to hook the compressor to it. And I gotta turn the compressor on. So things are gonna get noisy here for a second. So I'm gonna stop the video and I'll be right back. All right, so a couple of real important notes. You've got this sticker on your tire. It has safety warning and it varies by manufacturer. So in this case, we're using Dunlap Sportmax GPR 300s. But I wanna read just a couple of sentences on here off of this for you that are super important to know. It says, uh, lock assembly mounting machine or place it in a safety cage before inflating to seat beads. This tire could blow up. If this tire is not made right and it blew up, you could get hurt really, really bad. So this is, this is a dangerous thing to do without it being in a safety cage. The other thing that Dunlap says on here is set air hose relief valve at 40 PSI. So 40 PSI is the max I can use to seat the bead. So again, that's why I've got my little tool here, which I took off for a second. 
and I'm looking at where my 40 PSI mark is. And the other thing it says is to lubricate the tire and the bead. So we're gonna make sure that we got not too much, but a little bit of lubricant at least all the way around. I'm gonna go ahead and do both sides. Probably got a little more than what I wanted right there, but I think we'll be okay. All right, and then I'm gonna take it to the 40 PSI and we're gonna see what happens. If it doesn't seat, we'll back up. So I'm also gonna kind of hold it down and I'm gonna be careful here. I'm gonna really lay the air to it. There we go, both beads pop. Didn't even take 10 pounds of pressure. That is incredible. And I will tell you, Mrs. Blue Ridge Rider will tell you that that works incredibly well because the first time we ever did that, we fought it pretty hard. But we've learned <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so, maybe yeah, forever is what it seemed like for sure. Okay, so now that I have inflated the tire, oh, now wait a minute. Though I heard it pop, but we didn't seat on both sides. So, this side right here seated pretty good, but the back side did not seat. So I must have heard one bead pop on, but not, it must have popped on a couple of times. So we're going to go ahead and get a little more pressure back in here. That's about 30 pounds. We're hitting the 40 mark right there. And I guess we did see it. It must have just been the way I was looking at it. Or maybe it didn't. It must have popped up on the bead, but didn't come all the way out into the rim. But now that we're inflated, we're looking good. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop my tool off. The air is going to come out. Zoom, zoom in on this for me. I'm going to go ahead and put a new valve core in because I've got it and I went ahead and pulled it out. So I've got my little valve core tool. I'm going to just line the valve core tool up here. Get this back in the valve. Tighten it on down. Looking pretty good right there. Snug, but not too tight. Now, Mrs. Blue Ridge Rider, what is the pressure of your rear tire? Do we know? 36. 36 in the rear. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna put uh... all right. So we're gonna go ahead and get a, my standard regular inflator, and I've got a valve that I or a gauge that I trust a whole lot. I for some reason am just not super fond of this inflator. I got this from Lowe's, but I've just never had a super high degree of confidence in it. Did a couple of things crazy for me initially. So we're going to pump this up and get our 36 in it. I'm actually going to go to about 40 and then drop it down with my more accurate gauge. Okay, so we're around 40 right there. Take my more accurate gauge, get it on here, right at 40. It's got a bleeder. Right to 36, get the cap on. One more thing we wanna do just to be 100% certain we've got everything seated well. I'm gonna take a little more tire lube here and just spray it around on the tire one more time. Make sure we don't see any air bubbling out. If we got a leak at all, you're going to see it bubble. I don't see anything bubbling at all. Wipe that off. I think that tire loo, maybe it's got a fancy name on it, but it looks and smells a lot like Murphy's oil soap. So I think it, one of the reasons it may even help you find leaks is it gets all bubbly like soap and it cleans your tires and your wheels pretty good okay let's check this side same thing don't see anything i think we're looking good 
Now I do want to, when we get this tire mounted on her bike, we'll probably rinse it off really good with a hose before we go ride it, just to make sure we don't have any of this soap on the tire itself. And then the other thing, every tire manufacturer tells you to break your tires in somewhere between 50 and 100 miles. So once this is mounted on her bike, she's uh, kind of in no lean mode for a while, gentle lean mode. You don't want to just get out there on a cold tire and just load it up, especially a new tire. So just take a little more caution and time. And, you know, we'll put 100 miles on our tires quick, so it won't take her long at all. She'll be riding hard. I heard air leaking, but it was my compressor. It scared me for a second. All right. So guys, thanks for watching. That's mounting a tire on a 2021 Yamaha MT-03. Next is to get the tire balanced and then mount it on the bike. Don't do what I've done many times, which is mount the wheel and tire on the bike, then realize I forgot to balance it, then have to pull it off and then balance it. Try to balance it before you mount it on the bike. Just a helpful little hint. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.